Hello and welcome to the video. I am Sandilya Kravidi, working for ENH iSecure Private Limited. In this video, we are going to speak about how we could leverage SailPoint's IIQ to manage the identity and access in units. As part of this, we are going to speak about two things. One, how identity and access works in Unix environments. Two, how SailPoint's IAQ could be used to manage the identity and access in Unix environments. Finally, we conclude with a demo on using IAQ for governing Unix. Identity and access in Unix could be explained just like the identity and access in various applications. We might say that it works in three steps. As step one, we identify all the users or the identities. As step two, we group the identities as per the access required. As step three, we provide the access to these groups. We shall be exploring the identity and access in Unix in a very similar fashion. Unix provides us two ways in which we could classify on who could access a resource. Firstly, let's speak about UID. UID is a unique identifier assigned to a Unix user. No two Unix users shall have the same UID. This is the primary way in which we could identify a particular user in Unix. This helps us in identifying various users in Unix. Now let's speak about GID. While UID alone could be used to assign a specific access completely to a specific user, it is not useful when a bunch of users need to share same set of privileges. To facilitate such shared set of privileges, Unix provides groups. Groups, as the word says, is used to group certain bunch of users in Unix. GID is a unique identifier for a group. Any shared set of privileges will now be assigned to the group. By the virtue of this, all the users present in the group shall be inheriting same set of privileges. This provides us facility to group various users of Unix. We should understand that at this point, it is possible for a user to be present in multiple groups. UID and GID answers the questions on who shall be provided the access, but that is not all. The next question would be the what question. What are the privileges that you could assign to a user or a group? Unix facilitates a permission based model for this. There are three kinds of permissions on files that Unix offers us. As the names of these permissions intuitively suggest, read permission allows us to read a file. Write permission allows us to write or modify a file. Execute permission lets you execute a particular file. Execution refers mostly to the binaries and the shell script. GID, GID and permissions work together to control the identity and access of files in Unix. There are two ownerships for every file. Permissions can be assigned to these ownerships, thus specifying what we can do with each of these ownerships. The two ownerships are the owning user and the owning group. As a third ownership, we have others which refers to everyone except the owning user and the owning group on these files. Read, write and execute permissions are assigned to these three ownerships 
resulting in a complete access model. This provides us the mechanism of providing access to the users or groups and thus establishing a solid IDM layer in Unix. As per Unix, it is to be understood that everything is a file. While this is not completely true, each and everything that is present in Unix is represented at some or other location on the file system. For example, starting from the normal regular files that you read and modify, input devices like mouse and keyboard, output devices like monitors, printers are represented as files. Also, the memory of various process that are running inside the kernel are also represented using the files. By this Unix philosophy, it's always possible that everything could be controlled using the access layer that is present on the files. In addition to the access layers on these files, there are some other things that could be used as privileges on the users. Two of them are home directory of the user and default shell of the user. Home directory of a user refers to the default directory which will serve as user's present working directory just after the user authenticates to the Unix. This is the place where all the files related to the users are supposed to be placed. Default shell of a user. Shell is the program using which a user interacts with the operating system. There are many shells developed with varying features and notations. Some of the widely used shells are bash shell, con shell and c shell. The shells differ in features. For example, con shell supports associative arrays while bash shell does not support them. This is all about the IDM layer in Unix. Now we try to understand how SharePoint's identity IQ could be used to manage the Unix environment. SharePoint's IIQ could be used to manage the identity and access in Unix. The SharePoint's Unix connector can aggregate the users and groups related data on the Unix server into SailPoint's IIQ and govern the users and groups based on the access certifications. Apart from the groups, the default shells and home directories can also be certified. Even though the governance is supported by the connector, provisioning is not automated by the SailPoint's Unix connector. Even though the direct provisioning to the Unix environments is not supported by the Unix connector of SailPoint, there are other ways in which the provisioning or revoking could be handled. The simplest and the default way is that we create work items which are actionable items for the admins or concerned people requesting them to manually service this request. Even though this is a manual process, we have a record on how provisioning and revoking is handled. It's almost like the service desk. The other way in which we could contain this situation is to have a service desk integration rather than having the manual work items. As we understand, some of the enterprises already have provisioning and deprovisioning modules on their service desks to handle such service tickets. Even in case we don't have any such automation, the handling of these requests is going to be much more streamlined compared to enterprise process being handled by the work items at the IQ level. 
Thank you very much for watching this video.